Welcome to Conversations in Integrative Medicine, sponsored by Natural Clinician and the Holt Institute of Medicine. And I'd just like to make some observations on multivitamins, specifically different types of vitamins, so that we can remind ourselves of their general function. And it's good to review this occasionally. Please understand that vitamins are really utilized by the body in quite small dosages. So when we're using vitamins, we're using them sometimes for a greater or different physiological effect. So there's a concept of physiological dosing of vitamins, of background vitamin intake, versus pharmaceutical or treatment dosages with much higher vitamin levels. So I'm not going to be comprehensive in telling you what each vitamin does because there are dozens of textbooks that you can really look up and tables of vitamin actions. I'm going to talk to you about some innovations and some pros and cons of how to use vitamins. Let me explain first that the general idea of using a single vitamin alone is a flawed idea. Even using combinations of vitamins in the absence of important cofactors such as phytochemicals and other substances found in the diet is flawed because we're really at looking at holistic nutritional support. Let's go through a few things and let's look at vitamin A. You could argue strongly that there's no reason to take preformed vitamin A. Certainly the precursor, the beta carotene or beta carotene, is converted by the body into vitamin A. And there's a bit of a control when you give the precursor of vitamin A because the body doesn't tend to load itself with too much vitamin A. So caution. Vitamin A has found specific nutritional uses in, for example, skin disease. Um, certainly analogues of vitamin A are used effectively in the treatment of acne, but with onerous side effect profiles, such as cutaneous um, problems, uh, side effects, um, even central nervous system side effects. So caution with high dosage vitamin A. High dosage vitamin A must be avoided in pregnancy. In fact, we have evidence that it's teratogenic. So we need to be very cautious in that regard. Uh, again, uh, one needs to review what vitamin A is all about, but it has a legion of effects on the body, certainly primarily supporting uh, cutaneous uh, and other uh, types of uh, body structure and function. Um, in essence, uh, Excessive vitamin A is generally to be avoided unless used in a therapeutic context and carefully supervised. Let's go to the B series and talk a little bit about them. Some are numbered, some are described differently. Talk about niacin. Niacin is really a gift for lowering cholesterol, but is best used in its simple, not slow release format. There's something about the kinetics of niacin that tends to cause more liver problems when delivered in a slow release format. In order to lower cholesterol effectively with niacin, you need often gram amounts, and that's when you get into the side effect range. Thiamine, obviously, for central nervous system function, found in grains, you know, wheat products, found in, in, a, in a variety of locations. Vitamin C, typically in citrus fruits, and C is really very important in terms of a classic antioxidant action, as indeed is vitamin A. And this classic antioxidant action is used therapeutically, for example, in cancer prevention. Uh, vitamin C uh, has a, an antihistamine-like effect. It suppresses, to some degree, inflammation and allergic reactions, well documented in orthomolecular medicine. Let's look at D, and let's understand that we're measuring vitamin D but it's vitamin D3, cholecalciferol, that's the real active moiety. And vitamin D probably shouldn't be classified as a vitamin because it is actually synthesized by the human body in, in contrast to other vitamins. But I'm a little bit suspicious of the use of very high doses of thousands of units of vitamin D that are now delivered sometimes in integrative healthcare practice for a variety of reasons. Vitamin D has anti-cancer effects in high dosage, but again, remember these fat-soluble vitamins are toxic in high dosage, despite the rhetoric and other pundits in the supplement industry 
who recommend huge doses of vitamin D, especially in cancer treatments or cancer support. So we've looked at B. Let's look at folic acid, which is part of the B series, and understand that folic acid is very useful but shouldn't be given uh, in excessive doses under some circumstances. And really it falls into a drug regulation category when you get up to high doses of folic acid, but very, very important uh, nutritional agent, especially for hematological health, for blood formation. Let's look at B12, and obviously classic B12 deficiency gives pernicious anemia with peripheral neuropathy, central nervous system problems. But if you give folic acid to somebody who's B12 deficient, you can precipitate serious central nervous system disorders. Be very careful. Usually give folate and B12 together for safety. Now, let's get down to E and the controversy that, in fact, E in large doses should be medically supervised. And I'm inclined to agree with that over dosages of 400 units a day. Now, the studies imply poorer cardiovascular outcome in high dosage vitamin E, but those studies were flawed in their design and not portable to the general use of vitamin E. But again, it's this notion that if you use single antioxidant vitamins in an unopposed, non redox balanced way, you may get an unwanted pro oxidant effect. Vitamin E is very important in reducing things like oxidized low density lipoprotein. Now let's get to vitamin K and tell you that vitamin K, except in a therapeutic context, is rarely deficient. It's synthesized often in the colon by healthy bacteria and so in many countries vitamin K is not actually permitted to be used as a dietary supplement. Good example, Singapore, the health services committees there do not permit vitamin K to be used in a supplement only in a pharmaceutical category. So there's a little synopsis of A, D, B, C, K and an overview. Now let's get to some areas of their specific use and again I'm really quite against single supplement vitamin therapies. They must be used in comb combination with cofactors. Now, if you take essential fatty acids of the omega series, they require cofactors in terms of vitamins for their effectiveness. A, B, C are required for optimal utilization of essential fatty acids. So there you can see synergy in nutrient administration. So in this short overview of vitamins gives the physician an opportunity to review this information and think about how they're best used. Thank you for listening for this segment.